Hey guys, my name is Dr. John Giuseppe coming to you from San Clemente, California. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing post-op instructions for dental implants. What does that mean? That means if you had an implant done or about to have an implant surgery done with or without bone graft, uh, there's going to be some instructions, things that you need to follow for the next couple days, couple weeks, sometimes even a couple months. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all of those things to make it easy for you so you know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do in order to give your uh, the better chance of success for your implants, better recovery, faster recovery, to make things go as smooth as possible. Because what happens is after you get your implants, uh, at most dental offices, you're given two things. A little bit of this post of instructions, which you're supposed to read, and most of you don't, and some gauze, which you're supposed to bite down on, which most of you do that. Uh, but yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just break everything down and go over it so you don't need to read this stuff. If, so if you're into watching instead of reading, uh, just sit through this video and I'll go over pretty much everything what I tell my patients after getting a dental implant surgery. So in order to make this easier, we're gonna break down the video into a couple sections. We're gonna start with oral hygiene instructions after implants, dietary instructions, what you can and can't eat after dental implants. I'm gonna go over the pain and medications to kind of help you guys out with that aspect of it. Uh, we're gonna go over what activities you can and can't do after dental implant surgery. And then finally, I'm gonna dedicate the last section to smoking and what those smokers out there need to be aware of if you're planning on having a dental implant surgery done. At the end, I'll share with you with my final thoughts uh, where I'll tell you when you need to actually worry about contacting your doctor and when it's just okay and you can just leave your doctor alone and not worry about it. So we got a lot of stuff to discuss, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. But before we do that, I wanna bring the attention of those of you who don't have a dentist or are looking to upgrade your dentist to go check out the website even28.com. That's E-V-E-N, the number two, the number eight.com, like the 28 teeth in your mouth. Even 28 is a dentist search engine. You can browse through profiles of local dentists, read about them, read their reviews, contact them for free from the website even28.com, the dentist search engine. So guys, go check it out, find a great dentist, and I hope you enjoy this video. Guys, we're gonna start this video by going over oral hygiene. Now, normally we tell you guys brush, floss, do this and do that, but when you get a dental implant, you can ease up on the oral hygiene, specifically in the particular area where your implant has been placed. Why? Because you don't wanna to put too much stress on the implant, because that can literally make the implant pop out of your mouth. See, what happens is when the implant is initially placed in the bone, uh, it needs some time for the bone to kind of lock it in place. We call it osseointegration. But yeah, it's kind of like when you've broken your leg and it's placed in a cast. You know, for the first couple of weeks, you don't want any stress on it. Well, the same concept applies to teeth. So having said that, you want to avoid brushing that area for a good couple of days, sometimes a week or two even, okay? Up to a month. It really depends on how the implant surgery went, whether the implant was buried or left above the gum line and what kind of bone quality and torque your doctor got, things that you can ask your doctor. But regardless, you don't wanna brush that area for a good while. I usually see my patient in two, three weeks for a post checkup, and at that point, I'll let them know if they can get back to their normal hygiene routine, okay? So uh, brushing, you wanna avoid. Now, if you use an electric toothbrush like I do, you definitely don't wanna to touch it. The electric brush uses a very high oscillation for those bristles, and it can easily make your implant come out of the mouth. So no electric brushing. If you have an electric brush, you gotta turn the electric brush off and manually brush around the area once the area is healed. If you have a manual brush, fine, you can do it, but again, I have a toothbrush. Don't brush like this, guys. You'll knock the implant out. Gentle circular stroke. So if you don't know much about brushing, go and check out my video on brushing. But just go ahead and take it easy with the toothbrush. Okay, let's go ahead and use this on an actual model. So this patient, you know, model had a couple implants. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to do this. Okay, you don't want to brush on the implant. You want to just kind of leave the area alone. And then after a couple days, a week or so, depending on how the surgery went, then you can start brushing the area. However, having said that, you don't want to brush on the implant itself. So this is what you're going to look like a lot of times after implant. The screw is in there. You may or may not see the upper portion, but you know, there's something in there. So you don't want to put too much stress here, but what you want to pay attention to, and this is what a lot of people miss after the area is healed, is these areas. The tooth behind it, this gap here, and the tooth in front of it, this area here. Because what happens is a lot of time patients end up getting cavities there. I'm going to just kind of draw out this on my model to show you guys what happens. And I've seen this at least a couple times a year when I do my implants. Patient comes and, you know, we tell them, take it easy to follow my instructions, but 
they end up with a cavity either on the front portion behind the tooth or the back portion of the tooth in the front. So right in this gap. Okay, so what you wanna do is after the initial healing's gone, you wanna get your brush and make sure that when you're brushing all of your other teeth, you brush these two teeth that are adjacent to the implant. Not the implant itself, but the tooth behind and the tooth in front. So those are two areas where you wanna pay very specific attention to, sorry, toothbrush, uh, when you have an implant, not the implant area itself. In fact, I want to see your implant be dirty. So when you come back, if I see a lot of white stuff on it, people get worried, they're like, I have white stuff on it. That's the plaque that actually builds up on the gum tissue. And that's a good sign. That means you haven't brushed on the implant area, so there's no stress and your implant's gonna succeed. Okay, so that's as far as brushing goes, guys. Just take it easy on the implant area. And a lot of you haven't had a cleaning. What I usually recommend is wait about a month after your implant surgery and then go get your cleaning. Whether it's with me or hygienist or some other dentist, it doesn't matter. But yeah, if it's a good thing to get your cleaning after your implant surgery, maybe at a month or so. Because you may sometimes wait three months, six months, a year till your implant surgery is finished. So yeah, you want to get back on the normal hygiene group in a you know, couple days, couple weeks. And then you want to go get your professional dental cleaning about a month or so later. Uh, where the area has had some chance to clean. Okay, enough with the toothbrushing, guys. I think I beat that uh, horse to the death. Um, rinsing, you want to rinse with salt water or with, sometimes we give a medicated mouthwash. Stay away from alcohol-based mouthwashes. Those aren't really that good uh, after surgery. So yeah, you want to rinse the area with salt water two to three times a day and do it gently. I don't like any vigorous like that. No, very gently. And uh, so you don't put forces on the plant for the first couple of days, two to three times a day, not seven, eight, 10 times a day. That's doing it, overdoing it. And again, you can actually dislodge the bone graft or knock your sutures loose. So take it easy, a couple times a day and you're in good shape. Um, what else do we need to go over? Water picking or water flossing. You cannot water pick or water floss in that area. So if you have one, avoid using it on the implant area for the first couple of weeks, okay? Um, and just kind of take it, easy, just go gentle, just less is more during the healing period. Um, also, if you have any kind of a dental prosthesis, like if you wear a night guard, uh, if you wear retainers, uh, if you have dentures, anything that sits on the area, you want to kind of leave it out for the first couple days and then start wearing it, unless your doctor instructs you differently. So what I usually like to do is if you have a dental prosthesis that you use it, bring it to your appointment of the surgery, show it to me so I can use it, because a lot of times I may have to adjust it. Like if you have a night guard or a retainer that sits on the area where the implant is, right? Let's say you have an upper night guard and you're getting this implant. I may have to make a modification to your prosthesis, or at least I'm gonna look at it so I can tell you whether you can or can't use it for the next couple of days, couple of weeks. So discuss that always with your doctor if you have one, so they can guide you in the right direction. Guys, pretty much that's all you need to know about oral hygiene. If you have any other questions, of course, leave them in the comments. I'll be glad to get back to you. But yeah, just take it easy on the area and don't worry about the area getting dirty other than the two teeth next to it after the first week or two. Okay, we got the brushing out of the way. Let's talk about diet, what you can and can't eat. Uh, things you can eat are softer foods, okay? So depending on the complexity of surgery, you either have to eat like a baby for the first couple of days, like an infant, uh, or you can eat softer food, but you definitely wanna avoid hard food. And that is basically the key for the dietary restrictions. You wanna avoid hard food. What are hard foods? Um, nuts, chips, pretzels, popcorn, uh, carrot sticks, stuff like that. Stuff that are just hard, okay? You don't wanna chew them. I mean, you just got your implant done, you put a piece of nut, you bite on it, you could have more than a piece of nut in your mouth. You have your implant in your mouth. So you wanna avoid chewing hard stuff on the implant for the first couple days. Soft stuff is okay, medium stuff is okay. What do I recommend usually for the day of the surgery? Yogurt, ice cream, mashed stuff, uh, mashed potato, uh, soup, that kind of stuff you wanna go with. Hot and cold is generally okay. A lot of people ask, can I do hot and cold? I would say, yeah, hot and cold is okay. Cold's a little bit better, but hot and cold don't really impact implants because implant is a fake screw, right? So, I mean, hot and cold's not gonna have an impact. I sometimes tell patients, oh yeah, I felt a lot of cold sensation on the implant. That's not your implant, that's a tooth next to it, which sometimes gets exposed during the surgery. Anyways, getting off the track here. But yeah, you wanna avoid chewing anything hard because the implant is just in place and it hasn't osteointegrated joint with the bone yet. So what happens is if you chew something hard on it, it can break the seal of the implant through the bone and the implant can come out. And again, this depends if the implant is 
buried under the gum tissue. If you've had one versus 10 implants, there's obviously a little bit of a different instructions to follow. But regardless, it's better to just avoid crunchy and hard food. How long for? It really depends. I usually say about a week or so, maybe two weeks. And if it's a more complex one, up to a month. 95% of issues that happen to an implant happen within the first month anyway. So that's the time you want to be a little bit careful. But it really depends again on the bone quality, the implant size and other stuff that your doctor is going to discuss with you. Uh, regardless, avoid hard and crunchy stuff because it can't damage the implant and loosen them. But as far as hot and cold goes, you're generally okay. And cold soft food is exactly what you want to go with. Okay, we're gonna discuss the pain and the medication that you're supposed to expect. Is implants painful? Usually it is a little bit painful. However, having said that, it's usually a lot less painful for most patients than pulling a tooth. So people who are scared of implants, trust me, if you've managed to pull the tooth, you can manage to get the implant because pulling a tooth is always more painful than putting an implant. And when you're pulling a tooth, you're dealing with the tooth nerves and the roots and stuff in there. When you're putting an implant, you're pretty much dealing with jawbone and just gum tissue. So you never hear people say my jawbone and gum tissue hurts. It's always a toothache. Anyways, extractions are more painful. So if you've had tooth pulled, you shouldn't worry as much about the dental implant. Having said that, yes, implants can be painful. Uh, I have three kinds of patients, ones that have almost no pain, uh, ones that have pain for about two days, and then the last category, which has pain for about a week or longer, okay? It really depends, again, on a lot of different factors. A lot of it depends on your health. Some of it depends on the implant position and the difficulty of the surgery. But there can be a variation in terms of pain. Regardless, the pain usually goes away or starts going away after about a week or so. So it's not something that's going to be super complicated. It's not anything close to like having your four wisdom teeth remove level of pain. Uh, but yeah, pain is usual because it is a surgery at the end of the day. Um, we usually give patients medications, okay? And the medications we give are basically a couple for different purposes. Uh, we almost always give them some kind of painkillers and those are either Tylenol or preferably an NSAID like an ibuprofen slash Motrin, uh, which helps with the swelling and helps with pain, okay? So Motrin is fantastic. Um, the over-the-counter ones are 200. We usually go with six to 800 or sometimes 400, depending on the complexity of surgery and whatnot. So if you're gonna take them at home, you might wanna take two or three of the over-the-counter ones because you wanna get a slightly a larger dose than what's allowed over-the-counter. But anyways, Motrin is probably the go-to medications. If you can't take Motrin, Tylenol would be the next one. Um, if we're suspecting extreme pain, we might give you narcotic. Now those can range from anywhere from Tylenol number three to Percocets, which is very strong and very addictive. So you wanna be cautious with that. You're not gonna get too many of those if we're gonna give them to you. Um, the stronger medication is if you're having excruciating pain, usually recommended for the first two days, and then you can ease up or just stop it after that because it is really, really strong, right guys? Um, and again, if you're gonna take a narcotic, you cannot operate machinery or drive a car. You just have to stay home and get some rest. And again, that's only good for the first two days or for nighttime pain. I have patients that have a hard time falling asleep for the first couple of days and these narcotics can help them, but we reserve those for the more complicated medications and uh, procedures. And you can combine the narcotic and the answer. That's fine. So if it's a super duper difficult and painful surgery, or at least I expect it to be, I tell them to take the Motrin and the narcotic together to get a synergic effect, which makes it even more stronger than taking one versus the other. So painkillers is usually recommended. And then antibiotics. If we're suspecting infection, we're gonna give you antibiotics. Uh, the most common one is amoxicillin and penicillin, but there's other ones we use. We use augmentin, clindamycin. I use a lot of z pack azithromycin. Those antibiotics help you avoid getting infection. So if I'm you know, working near the sinuses or if I'm expecting the patient to maybe deal with infection, especially a lot of times when I do immediates where I take out the tooth and put the implant at the same time, uh, antibiotics can be helpful. So uh, if you get antibiotics, guys, make sure you finish them. You don't want to stop at day two or three, okay? You can stop with painkillers after the second or third day, and you should if you are not having pain. But when you get antibiotics, you always wanna finish the course. So usually you're gonna get between five to 10 days of antibiotics. Just stay on track and finish it so your bugs in the body don't actually become more resistant. Always finish your antibiotics and take them as instructed. But yeah, that's as far as pain goes. So there is some pain, there might be infection, but that's why we're gonna give you medication. So um, that should take care of it. And then after about a week or so, it should start going away. Now. If your pain is unbearable or if after a week it starts getting worse, 
then yeah, you might want to touch base with your doctor. But to expect to not have any pain, not very realistic. However, if you go to an experienced dentist and it's a simple implant, you may have this much pain. If you're pulling all of your teeth and putting in 10 implants, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of pain. So yeah, that's pretty much what I gotta say about pain, guys. I'll leave any questions you have in the comments below. Let's talk about the next topic. Let's talk about the activities you're supposed to do after implants. Well, an implant is a surgery. So depending on how difficult the surgery was and how long it took, if you're in there for three hours, then it's a more complex one, obviously, or if you're doing multiple teeth. So you wanna get some rest. Bed rest is ideal. Take a day or two off from work if possible. Um, you may be able to go to work if it's just one implant. I mean, when I got my implant, I went to work the next day and did two implants on the other patients. But yeah, you wanna just take it easy, get some rest, let your body recover. Most of the healing happens the first two to three days. So that's when you need to get as much rest as possible to let it heal. Uh, if you work during the week, it's a good idea to schedule it on a Thursday, Friday, so you can just have the week to recover, especially if it's more complex. But resting is always good. Um, a lot of people ask me about exercises. You definitely want to avoid heavy exercise. So if you're going to be lifting weights and doing a lot of that, putting a lot of stress on your jaws, you don't want to do that because that can actually cause damage to the implant and it can knock it loose. Um, do not play with your tongue with the implant. Just leave the area alone. But yeah, heavy exercises are usually frowned upon. Light exercises are okay. So you can definitely walk. Um, maybe a little bit of light biking is okay, but nothing intense, you know, no hanging upside down, no running a marathon or anything like that the first two to three days. Now, after two to three days, if the pain's gone and you're healing fabulously, you can resume your normal activity. But if you're still having a lot of discomfort or if it was a super complicated surgery, up to a week, you wanna avoid doing any kind of a strenuous exercises because the stress that you put on your body can impact the implant and it can lead to failure, which is just not worth it. So talk to your doctor as far as how long they recommend, but regardless, you wanna stop doing that after you get the implant surgery so that your body can rest, so that the blood can go to your implant and so the rest of your body, and you can heal as quickly and as beautifully as possible. Smoking, smoking deserve its own section because smoking has that much of an effect on dental implants and it's not a good one yet. So let me tell you my quick two cents about smoking and every doctor is gonna have a different opinion, but I've done a lot of these surgeries. So if you really want your implant to take, your best bet is to avoid smoking a week before and a week afterwards. Why do I say a week? Because the platelets, the, you know, the things that carry your oxygen and blood get affected by the nicotine. So if you're a smoker, you're gonna have less blood flow to the tissue. Now, if you stop smoking for about a week, it takes about five days for the platelets to turn around in the body. So you're actually gonna have fresher, stronger, higher oxygenated platelets go into the area, which means a better chance of success. So a week before and a week after is perfect. I know it might be a little hard for you guys, but if you want your implant to succeed, it's worth it. Because if you don't, the chances of a failure go up significantly higher. Smokers, I would say in my experience, have three to five times as much failures and complication as non-smokers. Now, if you've been a smoker for 20 years, will stopping smoking a week before and a week after make you as good of a candidate as a non-smoker? No, it will not, okay? You're still gonna have much higher risk, but you might as well give yourself the best chance. So if you can stop a week before and a week after, perfect. You're giving yourself the best chance possible, follow the other instructions, and hopefully your implant will take, because I've had a couple of smoker patients that have had infection and the implant came out and it's not unusual and I, I almost always expect it. So unless you stop the smoking, it's on you guys. You might have to go through three surgeries instead of just one, okay? Um, now, there's different things we're smoking. We're generally speaking about cigarettes because that is actually the most harmful one. There's not enough data on vaping guys, but I'm pretty sure vaping is gonna have the same effect as smoking and it's just about as harmful, maybe just a little bit less, but pretty much the same thing. Um, in a lot of states, it's legal to do marijuana, like California, yay, <laughs> for those of you who like it. Uh, how does marijuana smoking affect implant healing? Marijuana is better than smoking. So if I had a choice between cigarettes or marijuana, I would go with the marijuana smoking. But again, it's better to stop it about three to five days before and afterwards. I know what you're thinking, wait a second, doc. I need my marijuana if I'm gonna get implant. I'll give you painkillers instead, okay? We don't like marijuana, again, because it does reduce the oxygenation and the blood flow to the area. So just taking it easy a couple days is fantastic. And any kind of a puffing motion too actually sucks the 
uh, platelets and the bone graft out of the surgery site. So that's also harmful. So we don't want you sucking. So if you cannot stop smoking, at least take gentle puffs. All right, please do that for me. Uh, but I would just prefer if you just stop for a week before and after. And if you really need something to get you through, we can give you painkillers. That is much better to take than just smoking. Regardless, smokers higher risk, so you just gotta be careful. You gotta follow all the instructions I gave. You gotta take your antibiotics and you gotta be more careful because the chances of you running into complications is that much higher. And because smokers lose more teeth, they need more implants. So this is something you wanna pay attention to, guys. It, I've had a couple patients that started, and I did tons of big implants on it. And I had a couple patients that actually managed to quit smoking after that and they saw the effect it had on their body. I placed four or five implants, they were in excruciating pain. They stopped smoking, come back to me two years later for two more implants, and they healed like that. So yeah, there is a big difference in smoking, guys. Uh, but at least one week before, one week after, you give yourself the best chance of healing properly after a dental implant surgery. Time for me to share my personal thoughts on what I feel like you should do after dental implants. Well, you should follow your doctor's instruction. Every doctor might give you a different kind of instructions. Unfortunately, we don't have 30 minutes to sit there and go over every single thing with you. At least I don't in my practice. So you might wanna read the instructions you're given or look it up on the internet or just watch my video and pay attention to that, right? Uh, but yeah, follow your doctor's instructions. They might have some variations every doctor depending on the surgery. I always change my instructions a little bit, but generally speaking, these are the things you wanna do. You know, don't brush it hard, don't eat crunchy food, don't smoke take your medications, etc., etc. So now I'm gonna go over a couple of questions that patients usually have. And they're wondering if I should contact a doctor if this happens to me after uh, my implant. So I'm gonna go over some of the most common issues patients contact me after implants and explain to you when or when you sh should or shouldn't uh, contact your doctor if you're having a problem. Pain, should I contact my doctor if I'm having pain? Well, if I'm giving you painkillers, then you should take your painkillers and you shouldn't contact your doctor unless the pain is A, unbearable. So at that point, I need to upgrade your pain medication. So you should contact me so I can give you something stronger. If I haven't given you narcotics, probably gonna give you narcotics. If I've already given you narcotics, the strong ones, it's not much more I can do. You might wanna combine them with an NSAID, ibuprofen, or you might wanna take a little bit extra, extra dose if your doctor approves it, but that's pretty much it, okay? Um, now. If the pain doesn't go away after about a week and it starts to get worse, then you also wanna contact your doctor, as, at which point I'm probably gonna to wanna to see what's going on. Because after about a week, the pain should start to really go lower. But if it's getting worse, I would probably wanna see you, okay? But the first few days, a little pain is normal, so don't worry about it. Take your medications, get some rest, let the area heal. It is a surgery. And sometimes it hurts a little, sometimes it hurts a lot. So that's where we give you painkillers, rely on those. Bleeding, should I worry about bleeding? Again, usually not. So if you have a little blood, it's usually okay. Don't freak out. If you're gushing blood, like it's nonstop bleeding, that means we had an artery. You shouldn't have left the dental office. So if you start to have nonstop gushing of blood, then yes, either call your doctor or call 911 or go to the hospital or emergency room. But 99% of the time, it's just a little bit of blood coming out the area. So what do you do in that case? Grab some gauze, you know, the gauze which we gave you, roll it up into a ball, put it on the implant area as such. Hmm? Oh, there you go, like that. And just bite on it, okay? Switch your gauze every 20 minutes or so with some fresh gauze. Do it for an hour or two. Don't spit, don't use a straw, no sneezing or coughing. If you have to do it with your mouth open. Uh, most of the bleeding happens the first day or two, but again, if it's not gushing blood, you're okay. Have I had situations where there was gushing of blood? I have, and I usually get under control in my office. Uh, it's very rare that the doctor would send you home when you're gushing blood. So a little bleeding is normally okay, but if it's just nonstop and if it's way too much, you might wanna contact your doctor or emergency care, okay? Um, I sometimes have patients wake up in the morning, there's a little bit of blood on their pillow. Again, that's okay. A little blood is normally okay. And because the blood is mixed with saliva, it looks like more than it is, right? So, you know, you put this in your mouth and it gets a little bit bloody, it's okay. Switch it out. If the blood is getting less, you're on track and you should keep doing it. Another little trick, which almost every dentist knows about and patients, some of them know too, is use a black tea bag. If you have one at home, grab a tea bag, wet it, put it there and bite on it for 30 minutes to an hour and the tain or whatever it is in the tea bag usually helps stop the bleeding. So a wet tea bag is a fantastic way to stop the bleeding. 
if, especially if you've ran out of gas, just bite on that and it usually gets the trick done. In fact, I have some in my office and I've used it once or twice when I couldn't get the bleeding under control and it works pretty well. So bleeding is usually okay unless you're gushing blood. Infection, should I worry about infection? Well, if you've got an antibiotics, then you shouldn't because the antibiotics is gonna take care of the infection. Now, people's idea of infection isn't really usually on point. So infection is if you have like green white pus oozing out of the area or if you're starting to get flu-like symptoms and feeling really ill and whatnot. Uh, I usually give patients some kind of antibiotics, so you know, take it. If you haven't got antibiotics and you feel you're coming out with an infection, then contact your doctor and they're gonna give you antibiotics if they already have. If you're allergic to antibiotics, which means uh, itching or shortness of breath, they have to switch out your antibiotics. So again, contact it, don't take any more, and they'll switch out the antibiotics. But the antibiotics should take care of the infection, so you don't need to worry about it. Let the you know first week or so go away, and then if you're still having a lot of complications, go see your doctor. But again, infection, like I said, antibiotic, and it's usually taken care of. Sutures, my sutures came loose. Do I need to worry about it or not? Well, let me tell you the truth. The suture is only important for the first couple of days. We use dissolvable and non-dissolvable sutures depending on the complexity and what we have in stock usually. Uh, but if the suture gets loose after four or five days, it's okay. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to call me, trust me. After four or five days, the gum tissue has settled in its final position. So if the suture starts getting loose and coming out, no big deal. If it's bothering your tongue after four or five days, just you know, put some alcohol, clean it, and just pull it out, or go see your dentist, have him take it out, that's better probably. But the suture, after three, four days, it's already done its job. So if it starts getting loose, then you're okay. If the suture gets loose the first day, that's usually not great, but again, not detrimental, but it's not like you can come back to me so I can put a new suture when the surgery's already done. So I don't generally uh, recommend to worry about the suture getting loose because it's something that happens. Just try not to play with your tongue, just take it easy, avoid the area so it doesn't get loose. But if it does, uh, don't freak out. It usually means it's time for the suture to come out and that's exactly what it's doing. Numbness. Uh, should you worry if you're numb? Okay, this is one that you actually have to pay attention for. If you're numb for a couple hours, it's okay. But if your numbness doesn't wear off after about a day or so, then you absolutely need to contact your doctor. That's actually the one case where it's important to contact the doctor because what happens is sometimes when we put implants, right, we can come close to the nerve and that actually can become an issue. Now, this is only of concern for these teeth here, the lower posterior teeth, okay? But if the nerve is here and the implant becomes too close to the nerve, then that can cause numbness, which doesn't wear off. So if you're having numbness that doesn't wear off after 24 hours, you need to go see your dentist right away because 90% of times that implant needs to come out. I know it sounds crazy, but if the implant is close to your artery or your nerve and it's infringing on it and it's creating a numbness that's not wearing off, that is actually the one thing that I absolutely need the patient to contact me. A lot of times the doctors take a CT scan before the implant, not necessarily afterwards. Uh, but again, you know, the nerve is right there and usually we're two, three millimeters away from it, but you just never know. The CT scan has a margin of error of one to two millimeters or we might have misread it. So yeah, if your numbness isn't wearing off, don't freak out, but contact your doctor right away after 24 hours. And a lot of times I ask the patient to come in, I take a CT scan, and if I have to take the implant out, I take it out or I might unwind it, whatever, I that does require treatment. So if you're cons uh, remaining numb, that is something you need to go. Now, what happens after that? Usually if the implant is taken out or it's treated properly, the sensation comes back after a couple months and you're okay. But if you neglect it and your doctor neglects it, then that can actually result in permanent numbness of the area, which is called paresthesia. And you don't want that guy. So numbness is the one thing which I would be concerned. But like I said, usually you're numb because of the anesthesia, wears off a couple hours later, the next day, and you're good to go. Okay, so those are the things you kind of want to, um, uh, if you have questions, I pretty much answer them. You can always email or contact your doctor. But yeah, there's gonna be a little pain. There's gonna be a little bleeding. There's gonna be a little infection. Your suture's gonna get loose. Those things are all normal. You're gonna be numb for a day after the surgery because of all the anesthesia. Uh, but if it's anything out of the norm, then yeah, by all means, contact your doctor, send them an email, call them and get a hold of them. A lot of things can be resolved via an email or over the phone. Hey doctor, I'm bleeding a lot. What should I do? You know what? I might have you send me a picture or talk to you over the phone and see what it looks like or just give you some instructions, right? Put the tea bag on it, get it under control and you're good to go. But then there are cases, like I said, like excessive bleeding where I've had to treat it or the numbness where I've had to go and do something to the implant. So there are situations where you need to contact it, but usually 
just another surgery. Just follow the instructions, get some rest, avoid brushing it, and you should heal up in a couple days. Guys, I think that is a lot of post-op instructions for today. Let me see, do I have anything else left here? Uh, no, pretty much that is it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. You know, if you're given a post-op instructions, I was joking, read it. And if you're given some gods to bite on it, bite on it. I'll see you guys on my next video.